For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. The US Congress has finally passed the COVID-19 relief package. But this package is too little and too late for the millions of people who have been plunged into poverty because of the pandemic. In March, the CARES Act had been passed, which provided $1,200 in relief to individuals affected by the pandemic. The next aid is coming now, in December, nine months later. $1,200 for nine months. And the current relief package, which is being hailed as a major victory by the Democrats, cuts this amount in half. The package offers $600 to affected individuals. What is $600 good for? $600 is one third of the average monthly rent across the US. The pandemic relief package amounts to $892 billion in spending. In comparison, a grand total of $6 trillion in aid and stimulus has been given out to big corporate entities this year alone. Let's also take a look at the other things the US Congress considers important to spend money on in these times. The relief package is part of a $1.4 trillion spending bill. This bill includes $500 million for Israeli cooperative programs. These programs are meant for boosting Israeli defense systems, which basically means they are meant for furthering the Israeli apartheid regime. The bill also sets aside $33 million for Venezuela's democracy programs. Perhaps a more apt name for that would be Venezuela's coup programs. It also includes $1.4 billion for President Donald Trump's southern border wall. All of these are far more pressing issues for the US Congress than saving lives during this health and economic crisis. $25 billion of the relief package is for the rental aid plan. According to the Democrats, these funds will be targeted to families impacted by COVID that are struggling to make the rent and may have passed due rent compounding on itself. These families will be able to utilize this assistance for past due rent, future rent payments, as well as to pay utility and energy bills and prevent shutoffs. That seems like a lot for $25 billion to do. According to Mark Zandi, chief economist at Moody's Analytics, unpaid rental and utility debt is going to add up to $70 billion by January. The spending bill also includes a moratorium on foreclosures and evictions until January 31st. This is just a month's extension on the current moratorium that expired on December 21st. Over 20 million people were estimated to be facing evictions if the moratorium had not been extended. This number is very unlikely to go down in one month. Many have also pointed out that the real need is for rent cancellation as the accumulated rent is going to be impossible to pay for those in need of some relief. The bill also provides meager amounts for survival checks, unemployment benefits and food aid. The Democrats are saying that such relief measures are going to be easier to pass once Joe Biden gets sworn in next month. This claim is hard to believe as they will continue to face the same Republican majority in the Senate that was ready to let the stimulus checks and other aid expire. The COVID crisis is continuing to worsen in the US. It remains the worst affected country in the world. Who knows how long the US Congress expects $600 to tide over the country's people in this crisis.